Hello everyone, my name is Devin Adams. Uh, I work for Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants here in Tempe, Arizona, and I am a Fortinet instructor, and I create these videos for my participants. Uh, whenever I do a demo in class, I want to record it just so they can see it again at their own time. So uh, this is going to be a real short video today, but essentially we are going to utilize Open Shortest Path First Dynamic Routing Protocol in our network. Now I had someone comment the other day that OSPF is only found in large networks. Now guys, call it efficiency, whatever. I'm just lazy, okay? If I could have a routing protocol dynamically learn routes for me and, and even if it's simple, uh, I'd rather do that than have uh, uh, static routes put in. So essentially here is the situation guys. So here is our lab environment and we have a FortiGate sitting here and essentially this is our main network up here so it's our LAN and our domain controller but we also have maybe off of port 2 a, a network that we actually don't like us ourselves administer but maybe they're still within our organization and uh, you know so I stuck this weird Linux guy in the basement you know and he's happy with his Linux devices and there's all these weird <laughs> mainframe technology science whatever all of these are on different subnets all right and the FortiGate is connected to these devices on a device that's not a FortiGate and uh, so essentially the FortiGate only knows what lives off of port 2 and that is actually a point-to-point -point connection uh, between the router and the FortiGate and it is in the 192.168.2 network uh, with the slash 30 and then over here is, is maybe dot three, dot four, dot, dot five, right? Uh, maybe we don't even have control over these guys here, but it's still our job to make sure it can talk out the, out the FortiGate. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like on our FortiGate. So here we go. Uh, this is on my Windows machine, and I've logged in here. And if you look at the interfaces, as you can see, there is an interface named Basement. Okay, so if you look at the submask there, uh, it is just a point-to-point, a -point, meaning that there is a 2.1 on this side and a 2.2 .2, uh, rocking on this interface right here on this router. All right, so that's good. Uh, in fact, we can test this by simply, um, actually, I'll do it directly from the FortiGate. And I can ping that link just to show you that it's working. So here we go. Execute ping 192, oops, 168.2.2. Okay, so that is the router. So it is talking. So we're like, woohoo, all is right with the world. Okay, and then it's also our job to, oh, let me go back there, to make sure we have the firewall policy. All right, well, that's nice. So let's go over to our policy and objects and IP4 policy and here is a policy I've made that allows non-Windows subnets to connect out to the internet. Now I did this properly by by putting each each subnet into a group and uh, or an object and actually grouping them together as an an address group to, to clean it up. Now I was going somewhere completely different with this with this uh, demo, that's why some of them say basement subnet and broom closet and bathroom subnet. I was going to put some of our Linux guys in the in the bathroom, maybe running some kind of weird, you know, uh, Apache server. Anyways, um, but that necessarily doesn't need to be that granular. In other words, we can use something called summation there and maybe give a range, right, of possible IP addresses to, to get there. So... Um, just know with, with confidence that, let me click over here, this is 192.168.3 network, this is 192.168.4.5.6, so on and so forth, okay? And that is the objects that you're seeing in here, if I'd click each one of them. So, just letting you know that we wrote the firewall policy, and it's all good, alright? So, in theory because it can talk and because we have the firewall policy allowing that traffic out everything should be okay so I'm gonna hop over to my my Linux machine here and you can see I, I was even stuck pinging Google and nothing's going out 
nothing's going out and you might be tearing your hair out going like what's going on I did that correctly why is it not letting letting it go out to the internet well uh, if we come back to our topology here the FortiGate participates in something called reverse path forwarding check or anti spoofing so all the FortiGate knows that on port 2 lives the 192.168.2 network it has no idea what lives beyond that so when an IP address comes from somewhere down here and natting is not turned on on this router all right it goes okay technically you're allowed through the firewall policy but I have no idea where you came from all right so I'm going to drop you and that's exactly what happens so uh, what we have to do here is a couple of things one is we could put a static route in our network and in our routing static routes table for each one of those networks right that uh, <laughs> look at that my my Texas one showed up there um, different example anyways for each one of those networks that live beyond ports port 2 all right because the FortiGate if we go to our routing table you'll be able to see that it only knows what it's plugged into all right so um, there you guys go and that's why it's dropping the traffic so uh, I'm I'm too lazy for that all right so I call up my Linux guy and he's he's way too more happy to set up OSPF so uh, he went ahead and he set up OSPF on this router and this OSPF is in area zero and it is going to re-advertise the or advertise not re-advertise the links that are directly connected to it nothing else all right no subnets that we statically put in there we could but for this we just want to know what's on the other other side of that routers interfaces all right so he set up his side he said okay now it's your turn Devin I go fine let's do this all right so I'm going to go to my network and I'm gonna go to OSPF alright now if you guys do not have the the uh, option for OSPF dynamic routing is a feature that you can turn on and off in the GUI underneath feature select so keep that in mind okay and then uh, the first thing we're gonna do is give this thing a router ID now I know that other vendors will will do the standard of you know taking the highest IP address or, or the loopback and assigning it I didn't see any of that in the FortiGates, uh, especially not through the GUI. So the main important thing here is you're going to want to make sure it's a number that's not being used by the other router. So I made sure my Linux guy programmed this to be 0002. So I'm going to be 0001. All right. So if I open this up, as you can see, uh, I can advertise back to that router my connected routes if I wanted to alright or nothing at all if all I want them to do is be able to get out okay because they are advertising what's connected to them so that is the first step give it a unique ID alright it looks like an IP address but it isn't it just has to be uh, something that's not not connected to another router or belongs to another router and then we have to create the area now the area in this case is going to be a simple area meaning that it's not going to be a multi-area OSPF so I'll just use the the quad zero that's normally the backbone area but you know we have nothing else here and you know what I don't need authentication it's point to point I might do that in in production but for here I'm just gonna hit OK and then I'm also going to say okay what networks are participating in OSPF meaning where can I find other OSPF routers well that's gonna be here so I'm gonna hit create new and I'll say in area 0 you can find other routers by going to 192.168.2.0 with a slash 30 alright with us doing that it is going to know that port 2 belongs in that network and so it's gonna start advertising routes back and forth so um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply okay and then we just kind of wait so how do we check on our OSPF settings well we can come down here to our monitor tab and we can just kind of hang out in our routing monitor and oh my gosh what just happened dun, dun, dun. 
look at that guys it found it found the networks that was plugged in there okay pretty cool now they're advertising them as external routes and there's some things we can do there to to make sure they don't come in as external um, <laughs> anyway it's way outside what I wanted to talk about but uh, that's just because we told this router that these guys weren't a part of area zero so they're thinking that they're external routes and that's fine in this case that's fine bottom line though the FortiGate knows now that going to this gateway which is ETH zero on this router you can reach these networks so just like that right just like that if I go back to my Linux machine there you go right away I didn't even need to do anything the ping was already running it can uh, it can find a a path back to that interface it passes the reverse path forwarding check and now I can establish a connection so guys the quick message here is all right sorry about that all right so as you guys can see here OSPF does not necessarily need to be for a big network I mean it's just a fact of you know if you have someone that you trust that are administering um, um, routes that are not within your domain I think it's a great way to get those routes ejected into your FortiGate so it can do those those uh, reverse path forwarding checks so I hope this was helpful if you guys have any uh, questions right just let me know one of these days I'll do a larger example um, but that was just a quick video from our class last week so I hope you enjoyed it and there is more to come. Thank you so much.